Do you want to make bibimbap at home, but you don't live near a Korean market to buy all the Korean vegetables? Well, you came to the right place today because I'm going to show you how to make bibimbap at home using vegetables from your local supermarket and also show you how to make this bibimbap platter so you can have a bibimbap party at home with friends and family. 오늘의 레시피 맛있고 간단한 bibimbap 만들기 my mouth gets so watery. <laughs> it's like, oh, feed me, feed me. Hi everyone, this is Helen and welcome to Modern Pepper. 안녕하세요, Modern Pepper Helen입니다. To make our beef bulgogi topping, we have about 150 grams of beef ribeye slices. And we're just gonna cut them into small pieces like so. It doesn't have to be too big or too thin. And then we're gonna add it to our bowl here. We're gonna add two pinches of salt, some black pepper, one big pinch. We're gonna add one tablespoon of soy sauce. I'm using jinganjang, but if you don't have that, all-purpose soy sauce will do. Then we're gonna add about two tablespoons of finely minced scallions, half a tablespoon of minced garlic, and one teaspoon of brown sugar and then we're gonna add a little bit of extra virgin olive oil or whatever oil of your choice then we're gonna just mix it all up you can make this you know like two days in advance and store it in the fridge I also have a very quick stir-fry bulgogi recipe that you can make in literally like three minutes and also a more economical bulgogi using ground beef so you could check those videos out and for my vegan friends I also have a mushroom bulgogi recipe so you could use that instead we're just gonna put this to the side while we get the rest of our ingredients going to make our simple bibimbap at home we are using the following vegetables that you could find at your local supermarket dinosaur kale about 170 grams one medium carrot thinly sliced like so, weighing about a little over 60 grams, half of a medium-sized red bell pepper, cut into thin strips like so, weighing in about 120 grams. And you could definitely use yellow or orange bell peppers instead of red. This is just to add that bright color to our bibimbap bowl as part of our toppings. And we have three romaine lettuce leaves. This is optional, but I always like to add some um, julienne romaine lettuce to my bibimbap for that extra crunchy taste. Next is our cucumber side dish. This is English cucumber. You can use Kirby or whatever cucumber that you like or that you could get at your local market. Since we're only making it for two servings of our bibimbap topping, I'm gonna cut it about three quarters over here. And for my friends that love uh, precise measurements, so it's a little over 200 grams. We're gonna cut the root end off like that. And then just go down and we're just gonna take off a little bit of the skin. So skip a space and go around. Sometimes the skin of the cucumber could be a little bit rough. So we're just taking a few sections off. So it looks like this. And we're just gonna cut them into thin slices. It should be about this thickness. And then we're gonna pick up everything and put it into our bowl right here. And we're gonna add one tablespoon of our Korean sea salt. You could use any coarse sea salt. It doesn't have to be Korean, but I love cooking with chanilyum, which is Korean sea salt that's been aged for like three years. So let's take a look at our cucumbers that have been so brining in our coarse sea salt. So it's been about a good 15 to 20 minutes and I want you to see the cucumber juice that it released brining in our coarse salt. So our cucumbers are ready to be rinsed. We're gonna add some cold water, kind of just rub it to release the salt. And we're just gonna rinse it one more time in cold water. So it should still feel somewhat firm, but kind of squishy. Pour it again. So we're gonna put however much you could fit in your hand and I want you to squeeze it gently. The purpose of this process is to kind of bruise it, put it back in our mixing bowl. So we're gonna add half a tablespoon of minced scallion, just the green part only. And to that, we're gonna drizzle a little bit of sesame oil, about a half a tablespoon. And then we're just gonna go in and just mix it. And this is it. it. This is like the easiest cucumber salad to make. It's light, refreshing, but slightly salty. 
Now for our dinosaur kale leaves, we're gonna just use the leafy part only. We're not gonna use this hard stem part. So just peel it off like so. Go down the middle, pull the leaf around the thick part of the stem and just pull it back like that. These stems, I wouldn't throw them away. I would save them and add them to your stock next time you make it. My grandma always says, don't throw away anything that is edible. I'm using dinosaur kale leaves in place of the long stem spinach that we use to make or a blanched spinach side dish. Not many of you could get those long stem spinach. Let's get started on that. Set your heat to high. Using a medium sized nonstick frying pan, we're gonna add about two cups of water. And I want you to bring this to boil. So once our water comes to boil, we're gonna add one generous pinch of salt. And to that, we're gonna add our kale leaves. It might overfill the pan, but that is okay. Toss it, turn it over. Look how bright green it looks already. And then kind of squish it down so it gets submerged in our water. Here I have one clove of garlic that we're just gonna drop in the center like that. The heat remains at high and we're gonna blanch this for literally 15 seconds. All right, so it's been 15 seconds and we're gonna turn off our heat. We're gonna quickly take our blanched kale leaves and put it in our bowl with cold water. This is cold water. You don't have to put ice in it. Don't worry about it. And our garlic that we blanched. And we're gonna pour this into a strainer, fill the bowl with water again and toss our kale leaves. We just wanna cool down the temperature so it's back to kind of being cool to touch. Look how beautiful the kale leaves look. And using my uh, <laughs> janky strainer, I had this for like over 10 years. It has holes, it's missing parts, but I love it. My grandma would always say, don't throw it away. If you could still use it, it still works. So all that amounts to just a handful. So I want you to squeeze it gently like that, maybe four or five times, that's about it. And then put it in our bowl, shake it to loosen it up again. Look at that. Then we're gonna take our microplane. We're gonna grate our blanched garlic cloves. When you blanch it for 15 seconds, it pulls away the rawness and the spicy taste of the garlic and then the soft, yummy taste of the garlic comes alive. Here, we're gonna scrape it off and put it in, in our bowl like that. To this, I'm gonna add one pinch of salt, some black pepper, half a teaspoon of soy sauce. I'm using all-purpose soy sauce. Quarter teaspoon of brown sugar. One tablespoon of finely minced scallions, just the green part only. Half a teaspoon of doenjang, that is Korean soybean paste. If you don't have this, just skip it and just add a little more soy sauce. And let me tell you, doenjang goes a long, long way when you add it to your food. It's a salting agent and it adds so many layers of yummy taste to your food. And just mix our ingredients together like that. We're gonna add just a little bit of sesame oil, about half a teaspoon, mix it all up. Roughly chop up our kale leaves like that, not too much. And then we're gonna add our kale leaves and then we're just gonna toss it. So you could make this like maybe two days in advance and then you could store it in your fridge. It smells so good already. All right, so let's have a quick taste test. So important to taste what you make. Mmm, this is such a good side salad and so healthy for you. I usually make like three times the amount. Really good. We're gonna turn on our heat to high and let our frying pan preheat for about a good minute. We're gonna add about a good tablespoon of your favorite oil. And to this, we're gonna fry our egg. Fry this until it has a nice crisp exterior on super high heat once you start seeing the little brown edges like that then what i want you to do is turn the heat off completely so the heat is off completely and we're going to place a lid on it and let it hang out like this for 60 seconds so it's been 60 seconds and even with the heat off it's making lots of yummy noises in there all right so let's take a look we want our eggs to look like that Cooked about soft, medium in the center and crispy brown on the outside. Since these guys are kind of stuck together, we're gonna, it doesn't wanna cut though. All right, so we're gonna quickly transfer this to our serving plate like so and the second one like that. And I'm gonna just sprinkle a little bit of salt like that and let the eggs just hang out while we get the rest of the ingredients ready. 
So we're gonna turn the heat up back to high. Using the same frying pan with the leftover oil, we are going to add the carrots. I mean, you could fry these guys together, but you know, if you wanna make it presentable and just have sections of different vegetables, then we're gonna fry them separately. To this, we're gonna add one pinch of salt, a little bit of black pepper, and that's it. We're just gonna quickly saute this for about a good minute to minute and a half on super high heat. All right, so it's been a minute. This is all ready. Turn the heat off and we're gonna add it to our platter like that and go on to our peppers. We're gonna turn our heat back up again and using the same frying pan, we're gonna add a little more oil, about a tablespoon. And then we're gonna add our red bell peppers, one pinch of salt, black pepper. And we're just gonna stir fry this again on super high heat for about a good minute to minute and a half. So we just wanna basically wilt our the bell peppers. This is basically done. And turn our heat off, put it on our bibimbap platter. Now I have some wet paper towel here. We're just gonna clean and wipe off our frying pan like that so that we could cook our bulgogi without having to go to the sink and rinse everything. It picked up all that stuff and look how clean our frying pan is. So we're gonna turn our heat up high and continue. We're gonna add about a tablespoon of oil again. Whirl it around. And here is our prugogi that we marinated earlier. On high heat again, we're just gonna quickly stir fry this. So I want you to leave it alone for about a good 20 to 30 seconds so we get a nice brown seared mark on the bottom. Ooh, look at that flame. It likes the prugogi. It's trying to come up. <laughs> just mixing around to finish cooking our prugogi. So this is basically done. We're gonna turn our heat off. You see this nice brown sear mark? on our bulgogi, that's what we want. That's gonna make our bulgogi taste even better. And then we're gonna put it on our bowl like that because juices will come out. Our delicious bulgogi juice. And here is our romaine lettuce. We're just gonna roll it up and just cut it into thin shredded pieces. Pick it up and then put it on our bibimbap topping platter like that. I have a recipe on how to make this bibimbap sauce. Also includes how to make like a gourmet version that really rivals the taste of the bibimbap sauce that you would get at Korean restaurants, so check it out. Now, make sure to be on the lookout for the next recipe, which is on how to make sizzling stone bowl bibimbap called Dulso bibimbap. Oh yeah, you can make this delicious golden rice on the bottom just like at the restaurant. Look at this, isn't this so pretty? And it smells so good too. I mean, this is such a good way to host a bibimbap party with your family and friends. Just prepare everything ahead of time and put it out and people can make their own bibimbap with the toppings they like. Anyway, I hope you have a bibimbap party at home and if you do, make sure to tag at Modern Pepper on your social media because I would love to see your bibimbap party at home. We could add just a little bit of sesame seeds like that on top just to make it extra pretty. And look at that, our simple bibimbap is ready. All right, so to our our beautiful bibimbap, all we need to do is add our ooh, gochujang. So you could add as little as you want or as much as you want, but I like to add a little bit more than usual. I love the sauce, it's so good. And then all you have to do is go in and mix it all up. So I also don't like to over mix my rice when I mix my bibimbap. I still like to have like clusters of rice like that. It just tastes better that way, I think. Oh, does this look good? Or does this look good? My mouth gets so watery. <laughs> it's like, oh, feed me, feed me. Here is a perfect bite for you. I put a little more bibimbap sauce on it. Bon appetit, everyone. Mmm. Mmm, literally like a party in your mouth because there's so many flavors and then the vegetables are still so crunchy and juicy and with the bulgogi and then the lovely, lovely Korean rice. I mean, you have to have Korean rice when you make people but You can't substitute it for other Asian rice. It's just, it's not gonna work. I also have a recipe on how to make Korean rice at home, but if you are in a pinch, I recommend getting one of these pre-cooked microwavable Korean rice. That'll do the trick but I think I'm gonna go in for some extra sauce on my bibimbap. My family's standing right there telling me to hurry up because they want to eat my bibimbap. <laughs> Wait, two more minutes. One more bite with you. Mm. So don't go anywhere.
I want you to go to youtube.com slash modern pepper and click on the playlist tab. And under that, you'll see a playlist for all the side vegetables that you need to make bibimbap at home. There's just a lot. Pick and choose the side dishes that you want to add to your bibimbap if you want to make it a little bit more traditional bibimbap. So I want to thank you for watching today and if you enjoyed today's simple bibimbap recipe, I want to kindly ask you to click on that thumbs up icon. Doing so does wonders for my channel so I want to thank you in advance. And if you did not subscribe oh. yet, subscribe. <laughs> 여러분 오늘 재밌게 보셨으면 꼭 좋아하는 버튼과 구독 버튼도 꼭 눌러 주세요. 다음 비디오에서 꼭 뵙겠습니다. All right folks, I will see you in one of the videos you see right here.